Johnny got a fudge pop laced with raisins. Susan got an orange pop filled with hydrochloric acid. Billy got dip in darts, dipped in fire ant poison. 97 more to go. A new park every day, new deaths every night. He was careful, always making false leads, always covering his tracks. He was clever, he was quick, he always made sure the poisons varied, so there was never a link to the ice cream. The hydrochloric acid took two days to kick in, and the fire ant poison started as flu-like symptoms. The raisins? Well, he just threw those in as a nod to the old classic poison scheme. He liked keeping them close, but not too close. Antifreeze lemon pops? Those took a while to perfect, but in the end, he got it right. The chocolate bonbons that turned them into cement from the inside out, he had bought from a fellow down off Bourbon Street. They had cost a heavy penny, but it was worth it, as it took his count down to 80. In Ashland, Oregon, he mixed a variety of snow cone flavors with the sap from the Chobani tree, causing them to dissolve into mulch the minute their little fingers touched warm water. This brought him down to 50. Picturing the mother's scream as their children dissolved before their eyes at bath time made his stomach clench, but he couldn't stop, not with 50 left to go. Klondike bars injected with South Sea cone shell venom were next. That one was good. It took almost two weeks for the poison to be absorbed, and by that time, it was too late. The newspapers of Bodie, California, called it the most deadly virus of the year. He called it numbers 39-49. A tar-like substance called Godish that he bought from a wicked-looking gypsy filled in the two weeks that it took for the venom to work. That went into SpongeBob SquarePants pineapple pops. It shrunk them so little, not even the most powerful microscope on earth could see them. Godish brought him down to 20. Jakku seeds went in the sprinkles. Almost every one of the children in the small town of Arnold, California, asked for sprinkles. Never before had Arnold seen such a string of mass child suicides, but it was only a tragedy to them, as his count went down to nine. He was in the home stretch now, so he picked his victims carefully. The twins from Lakeshore got two cones of arsenic. The lonely boy in East Palo Alto got a frozen black widow in his great popsicle. Baby Gretchen got the last of the Chobani sap. Five more to go. He was parked outside Stafford Park. He watched carefully as children ran in and out of the water sprinklers. Then he turned on his music. They came to him like flies to honey. Parents smiled appreciatively as they handed him their money, oblivious to whom they were actually smiling at. The girl in the pink swimsuit got a chocolate ice cream with Jakku sprinkles. A boy named Nancy bought a Mickey Mouse pop with rattlesnake venom. A brother bought him and his sister matching SpongeBob pops. Anticipating the arrival of his last victims, a familiar face caught the man off guard. Daddy? And then handed the boy his ice cream. One more to go. Jesus Christ, okay. That... That was the ice cream man, and, um, that got considerably more disturbing as time went on. But basically what we have here is someone, for some reason, who has a hundred children to kill. For some reason, in the comments is that he made a deal with a demon or something, that a hundred more souls would grant him a hundred more years of his life. Or maybe it's to escape hell, other things like that. Um, there's a couple things that got me off guard though, which was a boy named Nancy. Now yes, that could happen, but it's not something you'd see very often, I'm sure. And a really disturbing part of it came with this whole daddy part, where basically he serves his own son. 
basically kills his own son. Disturbing. Another thing that I'd like to point out, which is more towards the realism side of things, is that hydrochloric acid would not take as long as two days to kick in. In fact, it, depending on the strength of it, would probably hit instantly. Um, and that's because the fact that as soon as you drink something like that, it, it, it just messes up your cells, you start getting ulcers, and it just excruciating pain like dehydration of the cells and then the cells will detach and necrosis happens, things like that. And I think it would take a lot less than two days to do that. But then again, you know, it's 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 creep pasta. It's not it's not meant to be completely hundred percent real. So that's that's just me though, having that knowledge and thinking that wouldn't take that long to kick in. But still Still disturbing nonetheless when you think about it. Like, where I am, we don't really have an ice cream man sort of thing. Like, for me, it's not that we have to go to the shop and buy ours. But still, as a kid, I do remember a few times where I'd get, like, we'd have an ice cream man that goes around, and thinking back on it now, it kind of creeps me out, considering that it could have been this all over again, and I would not be here. But, yeah. <laughs> anyway, let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. If you liked it, leave a like. I myself liked it. If you dislike it though, leave a dislike. You can join my Discord, the link to do so is in the description below. You can share this video around to give your friends a scare. And as always, thank you so much for watching.